population decline, does this term ring any bells for you? If you live outside of Japan, you might say no. If you live here in Tokyo, you might say no. I was born and have spent most of my life in Tokyo, but I say yes. Why? Before I tell you that, let me give you some facts and numbers. Population decline is slow and vague, but it is an actual social issue in some parts of the world. Here are some numbers. Total fertility rate, 1.36. Natural population growth rate, minus 4.2%. Tokyo had more people moving in than moving out for more than 20 years in a row until we faced COVID-19. Well, the pandemic may have stopped that record, but despite that, the trend isn't changing very much. The majority of the people who moved out of Tokyo last year have moved to other places in the same metropolitan area. Centralization is still going on. The fact is, population decline is happening right now. But I'm not here to give you a perfect answer. Instead, I'm here to share with you a story that I experienced in a town called Mugicho in Tokushima. I'd like you to sense a new perspective in facing the population decline through my stories. It begins with the year I turned 20. I was already a student in Hitotsubashi University and I decided to engage in a kind of volunteer work. It was to make a one-week summer school for the high school students. There were multiple summer schools in several regions across Japan. I had options where I wanted to go. I picked Mugi simply because it was the farthest from Tokyo. The participants of the summer school were from all over Japan and the world. It was very exciting. Back then, Mugicho was just a host town to me. During the summer school, I worked hard to make it successful. I had very little chance to look around. Since I was caught up in getting to know the other participants, I barely had a chance to truly know about the town and its people. However, I suddenly found myself wondering, what is in this town? A little chit-chat during lunch, a little help when I was in trouble, I was touched by the kindness of the people of Mugicho. Next year, I went back as a program director of the summer school. My curiosity grew even greater as I communicated and worked with the people in the town. What drives those people to help us, to help host the summer school, which is almost irrelevant to them? Fortunately, some of the people who helped me, I would say my mentors, gave me a chance. A chance to truly experience the town. They asked me to do an internship there. Without hesitation, I decided to spend a month of the following summer in Mugicho. On August 1st, 2019, I was assigned as an intern. To be honest, I felt like I moved to the town. I was so excited. Most of my work was related to education. On the first day, my very first job was to teach swimming lessons to the elementary school kids. For your information, I wasn't much of a swimmer. The kids had never met me before, of course, but they played with me innocently and helped to ease my nerves. On top of that, some kids swam even faster than me. Anyway, during the internship, I was mainly involved with the local junior high school students. I helped them with their local community activities. Sometimes I made flyers and videos for them, and other times I went around the town with them to take pictures of the scenery, to buy goods for the activities, and so on. I wasn't spending my time alone. During my stay, I made new friends from various backgrounds. People who were born and raised in Mugi and are now living elsewhere, college students who live in Tokushima and help educational activities there, and young workers who contribute so much to the town. As the days passed, I slowly got used to life in Mugi. I remember the conversations with my two friends. One of them was a friend I knew from the summer school volunteering. 
He grew up in Mugi and was really passionate about the town. He was very concerned about the current situation the community was under. He was thinking so much about what he could do to make it better. The other one was a friend I met for the first time during my month long stay. He also had things in mind. But he was more of an optimistic guy who tried to make the town more fun. They were different, but both of my friends shared the same kind of anxiety. The anxiety towards the future of the town, or perhaps the future of Japanese society as a whole. At the moment I had a conversation with them, I couldn't quite grasp the anxiety they felt. But I still had days left to figure that out. Well, we all know that summer is a wonderful season, but Midsummer Night in Mugi is even more wonderful. I once helped with the local Andon exhibition. Andon is a traditional paper lantern. You put them along the beach and light a fire. When the sun sets, you will absorb yourself into such a dreamy space. Andon has been one of the town's important cultures, but the Andon culture is sadly fading away. There was a group of people who preserved the Andon culture. The exhibition was one of their efforts. They told me once that they were sad to see the town diminish, and that they would be happy if Andon would remind the younger generation of Mugi. At the exhibition, I saw not only the local elderly people, but also the parents and kids. Here's another story. One day, a group of reporters came to write about the town. The truth is, they were also college students just like me, and they had a mission to write an article on the local brochure. So I asked them, May I come with you? And they said, Of course, yes. So first, we went to a local diner and we happened to talk to the owner. The place was run by a husband and wife. They were kind enough to pull out an old map of the town. The map was several decades old. We were able to imagine what this town used to look like. Mr. and Mrs. Diner also told us some stories of the town in the past. The next day, with the map in hand, we decided to walk around the town with the local guide. We found that some places hadn't changed at all. However, for example, the shopping street, where we found various stores on the map, was now deserted. At first, my eyes were only focused on the rich nature and the kindness of the people. But as days passed, I saw the kindness, but also the sadness, the anxiety that the younger generation felt, and the indescribable emotion that the older generation conveyed. I began to think. Perhaps these were the same thing. In fact, the population of a small town like Mugi is decreasing every year. In the case of Mugi Town, it is not just the natural decline of children being born, but also the social decline as people move to other towns. Specifically, there are no high schools or colleges in town, and the younger students and those raising children are leaving. While dealing with such a situation, The town has done many activities to improve its attractiveness. I wasn't sure whether I fully understood the town yet, but even so, I was gradually beginning to see its light and shade. I began to wonder what I could do as an outsider who knew nothing about the town but happened to be involved in. One of the most memorable events for me was the festival the local junior high school students organized. It wasn't a big festival, but the students came up with splendid ideas to make the festival more fun. Besides myself, several other young people from outside the town also came to help, and we worked together to come up with ideas and tried so many different things to make the event a success. When we were all thinking about how to express the best of the town in the photo exhibition, I picked one photo. And one of the students told me, I've never paid attention to that. Perhaps it was because the scenery was something they saw every day, or perhaps they had never thought about how beautiful their hometown was. Then I began to think, this might be it. 
What is the significance of an outsider like me? After all, my presence might not have been necessary. However, the presence of an outsider like me may have been the catalyst that connected the local children and the town. The third grade students who were the core of this festival would be going to school outside the town the following year, and their connection to the town might fade. By rethinking about the town and its interacting with its people, they may want to come back someday. The involvement of outsiders who had absolutely no ties to the community may help rediscover the potential of the town and improve the community building. There is also an unexpected byproduct of the involvement of outsiders. People who originally had no connection to the town have fallen in love with it, and the number of people who visit regularly has been increasing. Some have even chosen to work full time in the town. In this way, even though strangers are getting involved and doing things that have nothing to do with the social problem of a declining population, something will happen that will create a connection. Population decline is something that communities all over Japan are facing. In addition to the straightforward solution of increasing the population, there is also the idea of increasing the number of people who have a relationship with the town, even if they do not live there. This is sometimes expressed by the term Kankei Jinko. I didn't know this phrase at first, but I guess I am now among this Kankei Jinko. One of the ways to deal with the population decline is not to see it as a negative thing, but to continue to try new things in a positive way and increase the connection with the outside of the town. This can be done by having people from both inside and outside of the town working together. Outsiders can bring new skills and knowledge, while insiders can bring them new experiences. Outsiders can mediate communication, while insiders can facilitate their interaction. The involvement of strangers. This is what I have been talking about so far. Well, it's not limited to tackle the population decline. I think it applies to all kinds of social issues. Sometimes the people affected by social issues are unable to solve them on their own or do not know how to. On the other hand, people who are not related to the issue have no idea what the issue is all about. When outsiders get involved in the issue in a positive way, a new chemical reaction is created and it might pave the way. Take a look around and you may find something that you can do as an outsider. Thank you.